all of your best memories are around food or over dinner, I found, at least for me. And so to be able to give a gift of something that's so essential and, and you know, give someone that nice reprieve, it's a special moment and it's a special ability that I don't think anything other than food really does. My name is Alex Decker and I am the founder and managing director of Alex Makes Meals. We are a community-based nonprofit delivering about three and a half thousand meals a week across Greater Melbourne. Alex Makes Meals started about two days after the first COVID lockdowns were announced. I felt helpless and I felt like I couldn't contribute anything. My sister, she was a doctor on one of the COVID wards, one of the first COVID wards in Australia. She'd have to, you know, get up before the curfew had lifted, get to work, work the whole day, usually without a break, in strict quarantine, and then come home after the curfew had ended, emotionally and physically just exhausted, without any real support. And I happened to live about a kilometre walk away within my 5k bubble, and so I called her up and just said, hey, look, I'm thinking of making some food, just do you want some? Can I help? And so I started making a lasagna to drop off at her door. I didn't want to give her, you know, 12 servings of lasagna though. So while I was making that lasagna, I went, it's probably better if I make a couple other meals, but that's going to mean I have too much food. So let's see, can I do it for more people? So I put up a Facebook post that said, if anyone needs help, doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what your situation is, shoot me a message and I'll drop food at your doorstop. And by the evening of when I'd sent that message, about 400 people had reached out to me asking for help. I was 19 years old at the time and that is way too much for me to do out of a dorm room kitchen. But for every single person who had asked for my help, there was a half dozen people offering help, saying, hey, look, I also have nothing to do right now. I also want to give back, don't know how. But I've got a large pot at home. Or, oh, I've just bought too many lentils. Would you like to use them? Would you like to use my kitchen? And all of a sudden over here, we have hundreds and hundreds of people asking for my help. And we had hundreds of people here offering help. And just little old me in the center there. Funnily enough, we found that because we started as, you know, we're going to cook meals for our friends and family, people we need and people we love. And then we had all of these chefs from Chef Hat restaurants volunteering in those first few days. And it all anchored the quality of our meals so high that we were giving a service that was really hard to find out on the street and, and in vulnerable situations. If we were producing fresh food that you want to eat, whether or not you're in a vulnerable situation. And then we were approached by Melbourne's own The Youth Projects, saying, hey, look, one of our food relief suppliers has just shut down because of COVID. We're down about 200 meals a week that we need to feed people, but we don't have a source for. Can you help? And we still feed them 300 meals a week today. They were our first official charity on that list. Now they're one of about 45. And it kind of just, it unlocked for us. We're no longer a COVID response charity. We're a crisis relief charity. And there's a double digit percentage of Australians who access food relief every week. We serve anyone who needs it and we don't judge. We serve retired communities. We serve drug and alcohol rehab programs. We serve women's domestic violence lines. It's the whole spectrum of need. And we don't have any right to say what is need and who deserves to need. Today we are serving more than 3,000 meals a week, every week without fail, to a more than 40 charities. That is very obviously more than I intended to do when we started this organisation and more than I ever thought possible. I realised that it's not about the food, the food is what enables everything else, but the actual impact is coming from the people and it's coming from those social networks. and. Just by chance, we found ourselves in a position to facilitate those connections. I think Melbourne is pretty unique in, in allowing a group like us to set up and exist so quickly. And with four years on now, almost at a million meals sent out to us, it's almost a million points of connection that we've managed to facilitate. I can't wait to see where the next 10 years takes us.